In a world of magic and mystery, one elf woman fights crime and the forces of evil in her own unconventional. <laughs> the Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe. Episode 7 Harvest Night. Written by Royce Pentagast. The story so far. Facing off against the corrupted spirit wreaking havoc in the world he left behind. Our hero had acquired a spell to defeat him once and for all. While she waited for the next confrontation, she had not allowed it to distract her from her usual work. Lucky for her, her next job brought the two together. It was midday, harvest day, where a knock at her door brought a flustered doctor and an urgent request. And yet, Sir DeVoe, I am Dr. Gavin. I, I need your help. There's a killer on the loose. A killer, you say? Tell me everything. Dr. Henry Gaben. I've been a child psychologist for nearly 30 years, specializing in criminal psychology. The killer in question was a patient of mine, Anthony James Castle, who broke free from his cell last night. Now I've treated many patients over the years, returning even the most wayward people to their path. But Castle is something else entirely. Driver, we're heading to the village of Pimbel. How do you mean something else? I've long held the philosophy of blaming the behavior and not the child, but I can safely say without a doubt that Castle is evil. Before he was a normal child growing up on his family's farm, then one day, harvest day, 20 years ago, something changed. While his parents were in town celebrating the beginning of the season, Anthony, then only seven, stole a mask from the village theater performance, took his father's scythe, and butchered his sister. When his parents returned home, he did the same to them. The screams were heard by passers-by who barely managed to wrestle the scythe from his hands. No one believed it at first, but it was clear what Anthony had done. He was sentenced to a term in an adult prison before being transferred into my care. It was there he went catatonic, barely speaking outside fits of aggression, then total silence. I came to realize that there was no way to get through to him, and as he got worse and less receptive to any treatments, the only thing left to do was lock him up. There he's remained for almost twelve years, until last night the door to his cell was torn from its hinges. Two guards badly beaten, and he escaped the prison grounds. Why do you think he's going to this village? Is Pimbel where the murders took place? Anthony has shown continued interest in this place ever since I met him. Outside the acts of violence, it's all he's spoken of. He's escaped. It's natural he would go there. Let's hope we can track him down before he does something. He can't have got far on foot. Guards said he stole a horse. I don't know how he rode, because he's never been taught. It's why I need your help, Mr. Vo. I've read of your abilities of tracking and how they work. You need some item of a person to track where they went. This is Anthony's tunic, or day in, day out, left abandoned on the floor of his cell. Sweet, this should be perfect. Close contact with his spirit should have left a strong trail that can be tracked. Well, that's odd. Are you sure this is his? Only, I'm getting nothing. 100% that is Anthony's tunic. Well, that is odd then. If it is his, it's like there's not a spirit at all. And what does that mean? If there's no spirit or soul, what is he? Evil. The village of Pimbel had always been quiet and idyllic. The horrors that transpired there 20 years before had not been forgotten. But its people had not allowed it to burden them. For some, like friends Jamie, Pamela and Nancy, all 17 years old, the killings may have well have been ancient history. Are you coming out tonight, Jamie? Maybe. I have to finish writing that paper on the Mornish Pirates. <sighs> Whatever. Forget that and come out already. I mean, maybe if I get down to it and really bash it out, I could be out by seven. That's when the fun begins. My public theatre debut as Anna Macera begins then. I'm totally waiting to see that. <laughs> Are you still going for the Callow play in the city? Auditions start next week. <sighs> Lucky you. If I wanted to get to Varadun, I'd have to hitchhike and get picked up by some gross old man. Like, <clears throat> that guy over there. Pam, it's rude to point. I mean, look at that guy. Totally perverse. Yeah, well, don't point at him, okay? What guy? That guy by the bushes there. Seems he took off. Strange. You totally could have taken him, Jamie. In what sense of the word? Shut up. 
Come on, Jamie, you and me, hitching a ride to Barajun to see Nancy in her play. What do As you say? the girls I wandered off, they the had no idea point. that I mean, ancient that history was doomed to repeat Don't itself. Henietta it. so and Dr. Gavin arrived in the village a short while later, pulling up in the same square, now decorated for that night's celebration. Let's hope your hypothesis is correct. Otherwise, we'd just come out to the middle of nowhere while a killer could be anywhere. Castle showed a continued interest in this village. He was seven years old when he was locked away. His knowledge of the world is limited by what little he was taught in prison. Either that or he's pulled a 20-year con. If he is here, how likely is it that he'll try recreating the crimes? It's a possibility. I've long felt he was driven to cause as much harm as possible and his family were easily accessible to him. Might I suggest using your connections with the guards to leverage some sort of protection of the old castle house? Good idea. First, gotta look for clues. See if he is here. Oi, mate. You seen the red mask? I haven't. Did the actor take it? I mean, I swear I saw it a few minutes ago. He is here. Darkness set in. In the chapel off the village square, the priest readied himself for that night's sermon. Shining his shoes and brushing off his robes, he thought he heard the chapel door close but didn't look up. He would attend to whoever it was momentarily. When he did, he found the chapel empty of life, and so returned to his study to finish getting ready. Checking himself in the mirror, all set to go out, he made his way to the exit to grab his brown overrobes, only to find them missing from their peg. He paused and then headed back to his study to check they weren't there when a creaking of footsteps caught his attention. Picking up a lantern, he followed the noise into the bell tower, seemingly empty. A rustle as he jumped with fright, but it was nothing more than a bird. As he went to leave, he heard another rustle, this time of robes, heavy footsteps, and then the cold weight of a chain wrapping around his throat. The lantern fell from his hand and extinguished. He tried to cry out, but he was silenced as the chain tightened, garroting him as his hands desperately clawed at it. He turned to see his attacker looming over him dressed in his brown robes and his face shrouded in red, pulling him to the ground, then letting him go. The priest was yanked off his feet and pulled into the air, the counterweights raising him higher as the bells tolled, signaling his death. As his life left him, his attacker headed for the exit, picking up the side laying by the back door and disappearing into the night. We can't just go assigning guards to protect a house based on a hunch. Sergeant, this is a hunch. There's someone here, an escaped convict, who wishes to cause as much harm as he can. Why are you being so... Bring me proof, Mr. Vo, and then we shall see. For now, I need to coordinate the festival. Are those bells supposed to be ringing? No, they shouldn't. Stay here. Nah, we're coming with you. The bell tower is down here. Oh my god, that's the priest! You wanted your proof, Sergeant. There it is. Anthony James Castle has returned to Pimbell. Nobody is safe. I'll get two guards in here to take him down. And station some on the old castle property. Good. Maybe that will stop him before he can kill again. Mr. Vo, before Gavin pointed out the bells ringing, you were about to say something. Why I was being so... what was it? Obtuse? Difficult? Well, Mr. Vo, I wasn't being anything but hopeful. Hopeful you were wrong. That this village could stay normal and not have this hell rain down on us. I was there 20 years ago when I saw what that boy did. Can you blame me for wanting to deny it could happen again? On the other side of the village, the houses were peaceful, unaware of the horrors that stood outside the window. Hey, how's the paper going? I'm almost done. I'll be right down. It's no rush. Performance had to move back after one of the costumes went missing. That's weird. I'll say. You got anything to drink? There should be some juice in the cold box. I mean wine, Jamie. How am I supposed to get drunk off apple juice? It's grape, actually, so close enough to wine. Come on, it's in the cabinet. Is it wise to drink before the performance? Just something to steady my nerves. It's what all the pros do. Oh, so you're a pro now. Well, I will be one day. This is me getting prepared. Careful not to take too much or they notice. This is great. Look at us, hey. I see us doing this forever. Did you hear that? What was it? Sounded like the door. Let me check. I mean, I can't see me and Thomas doing it forever. He's just like so eager, you know? Like he's just wanting to 
get it over with and move on to the next... Shh. I think I heard something. A what something? Footsteps outside. Ooh, scary. Look at you. Two sips and you're already over the edge. I am not. <gasps> Stay behind me. It was just a knock at the front door, Jamie. Excuse me, miss. I'll move the town guard. Just knocking to inform you we'll have officers stationed at the front of your property as a precaution. Is something happening? Nothing to worry about, miss. Just give us a shout if you need any help. Well, that's weird. Guards have been placed about the house. We're keeping people indoors, but it's not easy. So we're keeping those who are out contained to the square. I still can't get a fix on Castle Spirit. I've never seen anything like this before. Perhaps we should comb the streets and keep an eye out. There was a loud crack and a bright flash of light. And yet I jumped into a defensive stance before she saw what caused the noise. Kids with firecrackers across the street. The most shocking thing, however, was Dr. Gaven, who had by reflex drawn a small crossbow from within his jacket, startled by the noise. Have you got a permit for that thing, Doctor? You must think of me a very sinister doctor. I had to prepare myself. If we see Castle, you won't need to fire it. I'll set him a light before he has a chance to say boo. Nancy, you in? It's Thomas. Damn, where is she? Nancy? Hello? Damn, you scared the life out of me. Hey, Mr. Clement. <laughs> it's Thomas. I'm Nancy's boyfriend. I'll just stop him by to see her before the play. Oh, he performed in it too. We were just going down to Pamela's house, you know, on 5 Ivy Lane. Wait, what are you doing? Okay, please, I get it. I get it. Stop. Coming! Are you really, Pamela? Eric, oh, rude. Yeah, I know. And you love me for it. <laughs> totally. Oh, no. What is it? Well... I'm home all alone with no one to take me to the party and uh, this strange man has entered my house. Oh no, whatever will he do? <laughs> I think I have some idea. Eric! Pamela fell down to the floor in terror as Eric was lifted off his feet with a scythe before being tossed aside. Looming over her was Castle, his features obscured by the shadow. A street over, Thomas's body had been discovered by the trio. The sergeant was distraught, Dr. Gavin shocked, while Agneta hunched over his body, her hands performing her magic. I know you're a healer, but can that really help? He's well beyond that, sorry. I've had an idea. Castle can't be tracked by spirit, but the spirit of those killed will bleed over into him. And now I've got that, it's something I can track him with. Or better yet, follow the screams. Sword drawn from her belt, and yet her leapt over fences and hedges onto Ivy Lane, her elf ears hearing greater than any humans, and leading her the way. House 5, the door open, the source of the screams. Anthony, get out here, you coward! From the darkness, a blonde woman, Pamela, ran out and into Anietta's arms. Within the house, she saw the corpse of a man. He, he killed Eric! Oh my god! Doctor, Sergeant, stay with her. Which way did he go? Out the, ba- out the back! And Yata ran around to the backyard, and there she saw him, walking away in the darkness, dragging the scythe behind him. She threw the sword at him, and with a thud and jerk of his body, saw it connect. But on, he kept walking. What the? Give me back my sword, you murdering bastard! He vanished around the corner, into the next street, and she ran behind him only seconds later, her fists aflame with magic. But Castle was gone. All that remained in the middle of the street, the hilt of her sword snapped from its blade. This sword has slain countless mobsters, demons, and creatures. And you break it! You get imbecile! Agneta returned to the village square, still lit for the celebration although those in attendance sat and stood about in fear. Did you get him? Kinda. I need a new sword or something to stab with. He isn't human. Oh no, he's human all right. For nearly 20 years I poked and prodded him, trying to get something, only for him to shut me out. But did you ever, like, stop and think why he did what he did? Of course we did. It's the question I've been asking for 20 years. No, for real, though. Everyone's using language like he's evil, he's not human. But why does a seven-year-old do what he did? 
You say it was normal before. What proof is there? Like, were his family's assholes or something? <laughs> I don't know. True, it was said that the parents were at times harsh, that a second child born over ten years after the first put a strain onto their lives. Strain? Like what? He made things difficult. That's what was said by the neighbours and the extended family. I mean, that were twenty years ago. Just in the last few years, there's been advances in understanding of mental health. I said I hadn't seen anything like this before, but I have. Once. There were this guy I knew. A soldier. He had a high pain threshold, was covered in scores from a rough upbringing. He was othered. He grew up thinking he were nothing. After being told over and over that he wasn't good enough for anything but fighting. It hardened him. He became defined by a label, not his name. That poor man. I've been thinking, did anyone ever give Castle a chance? What do you mean? murdered his entire family. You can't be asking we give him sympathy. No, but you talk about him like he's a monster, and maybe he's one of your own make. And yet I stood and began to pace back and forwards. You break someone down like that, and they become open to negative influences, whether they be internal or external, mental health deterioration or others' actions. Oh. Her vision went black before it returned. She still stood in the village square, now devoid of people, light, and color. Whether they be tangible, or something more supernatural. You. You're behind this, aren't you? All that has transpired is the doing of Anthony James Castle. At most, I gave him a nudge. You set a murderer free. And for what? People have died. Yes, seven of them. One of the prison guards succumbed to his wounds in hospital. A man on the road whom Castle killed for his clothes. The priest hanging in his belfry. A woman on her way to the festival. You haven't found her body yet. Two teenage boys, and now one of the lower men. Seven is nothing compared to what is yet to come. Oh, of that I have no doubt. But one guy, compared to your past mass poisoning attempts, You'd rather scale back your budget. If only to get you out of the city, so I can put my further plans into action. You what? Seems as though Castle was wounded in your encounter. Looks like he's heading home. I don't think he'll take too kindly to the current occupants. With a bright flash, Agneta had returned to where she was, standing before the sergeant and the doctor once more. Did you see anything just then? Like what? Uh, nothing. I know where Castle's going. Where's his old house? Follow me. Word of the massacre had not reached Jamie or Nancy, who could only peer out the windows and speculate why members of the guard had stations around Jamie's house, the former castle house. Had they kept looking outside sooner, they might have seen a shadowy figure picking off the guards one by one, attacking them from behind before dragging their lifeless bodies into the bushes. What do you think they're doing out there? I wish they'd hurry up. That nip of wine's starting to wear off, and I am so on edge I might need another. It has to be something serious. I've never known the guards to act like this before. Maybe something has happened. Hmm. Seems the guards are gone. Really? There's no one out front, so they must be. I'll go check. Be right back. Be careful. I'm just checking the door, Jamie. What do you think's gonna happen, a rogue splinter? Hello? Guards? Anyone? Hey! Weird. No one. Do you think we should head off to the square? I think we should wait for the guards to come back. They wouldn't be out there without a reason. What was that? Sounded like something hit the window. Like a bird. There's something there on the window. Oh no, you might be right. I think that's blood on the window. W wait. That's a handprint there. As Nancy leaned in to inspect the mark, Castle's hand punched through the window pane and grasped Nancy by her hair, trying to pull her through to the outside. Ah! Help! Jamie grabbed a poker from next to the fireplace and smashed it down on Castle's forearm and wrist, sticking out from the sleeve of the brown robes. She hit him over and over until he desperately let go of Nancy's head and retreated into the darkness. Are you okay? He ripped out my hair! But did he get you? No, no, I'm fine. Wait, the back door, lock it, hurry up! 
Nancy ran down the hall to the rear of the house, slipping in a puddle but managing to lock the door. Jamie joined her, turning up the gas lamps and igniting candles to flood the place with light. Did you hurt yourself? No, I just slipped. That's not your blood on the floor. Oh my god. Is he in here? Get behind me, back to back. Grab one of those kitchen knives and one for me too. Who is he? What does he want? He's got to be why the guards were out there. There's no way this is a coincidence. Ah! Jamie! Anthony Castle, towering over them and still dressed in his brown robes and furious red mask, burst from the cupboard to grapple Jamie and throw her against the wall. Outside, Agneta and Gavin ran up the path to the house, spotting the guards' corpses and broken window pane, screams coming from within the house before they stopped. Before she could reach it, she heard a rattling as the door flung open and the two girls ran out, down the path and into her arms. Stay here. Into the house, Agneta and Gavin ran, spotting a trail of red towards them, then turning up the stairs. There he stood on the landing, silhouetted against the lone gas lamp, the light glistening on the soaked blade of his scythe. Agneta ran up towards him with her fists aflame with magic, as with a swift move, Castle punched out the lights and sent the stairs into darkness. She barely dodged a swing of his scythe as she reached for the wooden handle, wrestling the killer for the weapon. She felt herself lifted from the ground as he hoisted the scythe above them with one arm, her face level with his grotesque mask, eyes blackened and hollow. She snarled back, shooting a burst of flame from her hands and setting the wooden scythe handle aflame, letting go and dropping onto the stairs as the handle burst into fiery splinters. Castle stumbled but stood upright. He slowly started for Agneta, who was tumbling down the stairs and trying to right herself. She seemed to have no weapon, but as she picked herself up, she saw with horror Castle pulling the kitchen knife from the palm of his hand where it had been stabbed moments before by Jamie. Agneta, get down! She did as Dr. Gavin, crossbow in hand, fired up at Castle. The killer stumbled back and disappeared into the dark hall up the top of the stairs. Slowly, Gavin crept up, reloading. Doctor, be careful! Reaching the top of the stairs, Gavin peered around the corner before making his way forwards. This is the place where it all began, Anthony. It will end here the same. This is not the time for dramatics. Castle burst from the darkness, smacking Agneta aside and grasping Gavin by the lapels, slamming him into a wall. Dazed, Agneta stumbled and crawled, her vision blurred as she saw Castle slowly killing the doctor. She couldn't stop Castle. He was too strong. The only way she could see to stop Castle was a spell so dangerous. It had to be done. She raised her right hand, pointed it at the murderer, and clicked her fingers. Immediately, she felt the energy drain from her body as Anthony Castle violently erupted into flames. Letting go of Gavin and trudging down the hall, he crashed into the walls, trying to put himself out, still deathly silent as the magic flames clung to him, the mask melting away. As Agneta pulled herself up and checked on the doctor, Castle tumbled out her window falling into the backyard below, motionless as the flames subsided. I need you to keep still. I've healed your wounds, but if you move too quick, you'll pass out. Anthony, you need to check the body. Shh, keep still, all right? Make sure he's dead. Heading down the stairs, she met Jamie waiting for her by the front door. Who the hell was that? What happened to him? He fell from the window. You got access to the backyard. Yeah, this way. Jamie led her through the house, unlocking the back door and approaching the charred, motionless body of Anthony Castle. There was no way he was still alive, the crossbow bolt still sticking from his chest among the smoldering clothing, the red mask a grilled blob. But she had to see under that, the face of the killer. Agneta reached for the mask, the heat causing her no harm, to reveal a surprisingly unburnt but shockingly familiar face of the sergeant who had been assisting them that evening. That can't have been him. No, it's not. It's not him. She stood, looking around frantically for something, expecting to see Castle standing in the shadows watching, but there was nothing. It's not him!
The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, starring Liz Corrick as Agneta and Pamela. Dr. Henry Gavin, played by Julian Hammond Miller. Helen Brunton as the Sergeant. Haley Ann McCready as Nancy. Tanya Aresti as Jamie. Lamar Lawrence as Thomas. And Michael Mengada as the narrator. Theme music composed by Matt Harris. Additional music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Produced by City Park Radio 2022.